had a very enthusiastic hug with Brandon Ayuk yesterday, and it got national media attention because it signaled something. What did that signal? This is usually how we greet each other. Honestly, you guys would see maybe a lot more hugs if in here if we had a film for you guys, but we're not on hard knocks, so it's the only one on the field. You haven't been on the field a lot, and we walk by each other, and it's usually how we greet each other. Bro hug, nothing more, nothing less. Thank you. Where, where things stand with that? I mean, is it still stalemate? Any progress? Yeah, no updates. Same with Trent. Uh, he had a, a back um, spazzed up the other day. Um, he should be good to go though soon. Yeah, yeah. He, uh, I think he, we think he pulled his calf. Uh, so he did it in individual. I didn't get to see it or anything, but I was told that. So um, we think it was a calf. Train nine looks like Cody Schrader's having a heck of a camp. What are you seeing from Cody? I think Cody's doing a good job. You know, he's gotten a number of reps. You know, especially uh, having an injury with Isaac, um, taking care of Christian um, every few days. So he's taking advantage of his opportunities. Really liked him coming out of college, and um, he's getting bet better each day. Brandon Staley um, was called a genius by Diamondo the other day. What have you seen from what his effect has been on the defense? I know it hasn't been a ton of time. Um, I mean, just having him around with everybody. I mean, we, he works with the Nichols a lot. You know, he really gets to connect with those guys and Demo the most. But um, just having his expertise with everybody in the meeting rooms with coaches, um, talking about him, just philosophy, um, whether it's early in the morning, late at night, uh, the way he connects with players out there on the field. I mean, he could coach any position. Uh, we all know he's been a head coach. He's been a coordinator. Um, but anybody who was interested in football, uh, he brings something to the table. I saw a call. I think there was like eight. I heard. I probably saw three of them, um, and it looked kind of messy. Um, so I'll wait to see it on the coach's film to maybe see if we can figure some stuff out. But I mean, we're all trying to learn, and that was the first time everyone got to see it. Um, so I think I saw three of eight. So it was messy, but um, I'm sure they will be th throughout the preseason. We'll get as much info as we can on it and adjust as the year goes. Uh, yeah, he had an ankle um, a few days ago. He was close today. Uh, hopefully it'll be good tomorrow. You've emphasized uh, a number of times that the leap that players can make from rookie to second year. When they're going through their exit interviews, do you give a kind of a special emphasis to the outgoing rookies and giving that kind of message to them? Uh, we do. I mean, there's there's lots. I mean, you want them to make that huge leap. Also, the second year sometimes is people's worst years too because a lot of people – they finish college, they're trying so hard to make it in the league, they don't think about much, they're just going as hard as they can, and then that first season ends and they kind of sit back and relax, they're like, all right, I get it now. And they don't realize it, but they don't go through their off season the same way they did getting prepared for the NFL. And then it's halfway through training camp and they realize, oh man, I, I haven't made it yet, it's totally different. That's why a lot of guys you see a sophomore slump too. Um, but it usually goes one way or the other. Uh, so you stress that as much as you can as a head coach, a position coach, and I think the strongest thing, too, is veteran players who've been through it and seen it, too. I don't, I, a couple of days ago, like when he was going with the ones and the threes. Who's this? Uh, Dominic yeah. Is that, he was double wrapped, but I think it was just with the ones. What, what does that show you about a player, that he can do that? Is this a special kind of time to see what he can do early in his career? Um, Any time a guy gets opportunities with some guys in front of him getting injured, it's huge for him. They get, we, and we've got to practice. you got a certain number of guys, so it's always the next man up. And... Um, you get those opportunities versus the ones defense, everyone gets to see you. And there's going to be some good, some bad, but it's kind of how you react to it. Um, do you get better each day from it? And it's been cool watching him out there because he's gotten that opportunity. And you can tell it's not too big for him. He's got to work through a lot of stuff. It's a totally different game and going against a totally different type of defense alignment. But uh, you can tell he's made it the right stuff and he's got what it takes. And hopefully he'll continue to progress. After missing the first block of practices, do you like the trajectory you're seeing with Pearsall? I do. Yeah, it's been great. To, you know, always it's tough when you have a hammy and you got to be very smart getting him back. We've eased him in. Um, he's gone through that real well. He's been real diligent with his rehab and stuff. And I know his reps went up a little bit more today, but it was a low day overall. And I think tomorrow will be a much bigger challenge. It's a higher practice. we got one-on-ones tomorrow. And, um, but I've been real happy with his progress so far. You got to pass in practice, but when that's not happening, obviously you want to see how these guys are blocking downfield. So. And, yeah, and... Just because the ball gets thrown to him doesn't mean 
they did good or bad always. I mean, you get zone 80% of the time out there. So I mean, I'm going to, I didn't realize he didn't catch a pass, but when I get in there, I'm going to watch him run at least 16 routes during plays. So like, you know, you expect everyone to catch it when it comes to you. So, um, that really doesn't affect me in terms of like what we see from a practice, but it's been cool watching him in the run game. He definitely understands our standard. It's not someone we have to call in and be like, we need more. Uh, he gets it. He's doing everything he can and um, just continuing to get more reps. Logan Thomas injured? Yeah, hamstring. Oh, um, now that you guys are weak into camp, is there anything you've seen from him that shows you he's taken a step in any particular area, either physically or mentally, that maybe he's had it? Um, no, I think. Brock was better his second year than his first year. I think he'll be better his third year than his second year. So um, just going through camp, we've got through our seven-day installs. I think we, today was our first practice without new stuff in. And um, now we'll start circling back and isolating a little bit more. But um, Brock takes every day the same. And we put him in a bunch of positions. And um, can't really say enough good things about Brock. What do you feel about Yadam when you signed him? And what have you seen from him since he got here? Um, I mean, we were a big fan of um, Isaac coming out of college, you know, back at BC, watched him throughout his career in Denver, played against him, um, watched him in Washington last year, um, him getting that starting role, thought he played at his highest level, and um, we felt he was playing his best football last year, and since we've gotten him, I um, feel even stronger about that. He had a hell of an OTAs, and so far he's having a hell of a camp. Uh, how do you feel about Mordecai? Um, uh, on the field and in the meetings so far? Uh, he's done a good job. He hasn't gotten too many reps. We gave him I don't know if you guys were there that one day or not. We gave him a few reps one day. Um, I expect him to get some more um, sooner than later. Another thing that got attention was Brock through seven interceptions in back-to-back uh, -back practices. Do you, were any of those, and I realize it's practice, and, but do you look at any of those and is he is a situation where he's, he's trying stuff, and he's trying to maybe fit something in where he wouldn't in a game? Or some of those just bad decisions, a little bit of everything? Yeah, all of the above. Um, there's a different story on each play. Um, I mean, I know always stats are made a big deal in practice, and I know that'll stick out too. And, you know, we never want a lot of picks in practice, regardless of who it is. But, um, you know, Brock's never really had an interception problem. He's, he's protected the ball pretty well in this league for his two years, and he also isn't scared to let it rip too. Um, when you're in practice, like, you know, if, if we were really trying to fix that, and if he had had a problem, and you come out, and that's all we're focusing on. And he still has some stats like that, and that's something that concerns you. But that's something I really haven't been worried about with Brock on, and that's why those stats are also something that hasn't bothered me at all. Uh, I know you guys always try to manage the workload for certain guys. And just given the like the amount of football your team has played the last three, four, five years, do you, have you had to change anything in terms of you know trying to manage guys or maybe add more guys with vet days? Any, anything like yeah, that? Yeah, I, I think in the off season more than anything. I mean, right now when you manage guys too much, it's it's great to get them in the season, but then I actually feel more responsible because you know you haven't prepared them for the season. And the way the whole goal is to get to the season and be ready to play football, and um, that's why you do have to push guys in camp. You know, I feel we've been one of the healthier teams in the league um, coming out in these first five games and stuff, and I feel that's because guys go hard in camp. Um, so you got to be real smart with that and get guys prepared. I do think in the off season though, like especially this year. Um, how long the off season or how short it's been. I think it's a mental break just as much as anything. You know, guys um, not here as much in phase one and phase two. You know, guys who've been around and stuff that didn't nearly bother me as much in the past. I mean, guys needed to get away. Um, we know what we put into this. We know how long it goes and um, not just with your body, but the mind, I think more than anything. Uh, last, year, last year, you guys led the league in the, um, 11, out of 11 personnel in yards per carry. Are you tied with the Ravens? Is it as simple as one team has McCaffrey, one team has Lamar? Or like, is, are you guys evolving? Well, how would you, you know, pinpoint your success last year at all? Um, I mean, without me studying that exactly, I think it's we probably didn't run the ball quite as much as other people in eleven. Um, so you got a le little less opportunities, and, and I think we ran it pretty good in all personnel. Um, but we're not running it as much in eleven, especially at the end of the game. So you probably don't get as many one yard carries, zero yard carries when you're just trying to run out the clock. So I think that could help those stats. But I mean, we try to run, be successful in every personnel. It doesn't really, um, we don't look at it as one's better than the other. It's how it affects the defense. How have you been seeing your safeties play out? I know Teleno might be ready for week one, but with Jair out there, I've seen a lot of George Odom, sometimes 
couple of the other younger guys. Yeah, I mean, just like the guard situation. I mean, when you when you have your starter out um, with Huff and everything, it's given a lot of guys opportunities in OTAs and now. Um, it was awesome getting Gio a ton of reps through OTAs. He's doing the same thing now. Um, he's doing a hell of a job at safety. Um, having all these rookies come in and not have to, you know, rotate in there with the starters and stuff. I mean, they get thrown into the fire and they've all stepped up very well. Um, it hasn't been too big for anyone yet, and um, it'll be interesting to see how that position pans out. He's not having surgery. Uh, still be about the timeline I told you guys. Um, he's not going to have surgery. Like Nick Sorensen, what's he going to be like? You know, in a, in a practice as a defensive coordinator, definitely looks like he's he's big. He's, he's a presence. Are you at all watching for that? And is it all surprising what kind of presence he is in these practices? Not really. I don't really watch presence that much. I um. Um, I just like people to be themselves. So, like, I, the worst thing is someone comes out there and tries to show you guys their presence. Um, that would probably bother me. Um, so I just like how Nick coaches. He's not just bother me. That stuff usually bothers players more than anything. They know when people are acting and they know when people are genuine. And um, we all get fired up about football. We all get excited when a guy makes a play, and we all are upset when something goes wrong. And uh, Nick's a very consistent human, consistent person. He's very intelligent. Um, very honest with these guys, and uh, one of the things I like the most about Nick is he's always his true self every day. Are you going to be? Do you think you're going to be talking with Brandon a lot during games? Is that kind of part of what his role is going to be? Uh, not really. I mean, most of the talk is about X's and O's and stuff that just happened, which is pertaining to the next play call and getting ready more offensively. Um, you talk to someone too much throughout the game and you can't make quick decisions. You got to be pretty focused. And I think that stuff, it's good to have someone who has experience like that to talk to after the game. If there's something that I would want his expertise on, no doubt I wouldn't hesitate. But uh, there's not a lot of just chit chat going on. Um, it's very personnel driven who's in the game on defense, who's in it on offense. You're trying to get play calls out. There's a time, there's a play clock, and uh, it's mainly dealing with the quarterback. Brought to your special teams here. Are you I don't know, reluctant as the word at all? But to, to to have him be a starting safety because it would reduce his special teams play. I mean, you know, I mean, George is one of the best special teams players in the league. But I mean, if he's the right guy at safety and he gives us the best chance when at safety, you never confuse those two. I mean, you got to go there first. You'd love for you don't want that to fully take away his role in special teams. So when you're that special of a player, I mean, we've, we're going to try to find a way to put him on both. Um, but it would take away from reps and stuff. But um, you're out there a lot more at safety, so you'd have to go with what's more important first. All right, guys. All right thanks, guys.